Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I'm going to be doing a Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at the M20R Mooney. This is a paid download, and um, I think it's right now like $30 or something like that. But with that one in mind, I kind of like this particular plane versus many others, even in the real world. So where this plane comes in use when it comes to real world scenarios, general aviation, uh, moving, you know, yourself and maybe a few others, um, small loads, stuff like that. So this is very much of a personal general uh, plane. And this is something I like because a lot of the planes that's within the game itself on, on the uh, without download is basically half a million dollar planes and something stupid like that. Uh, whereas the reality is, is most of us don't have anywhere near that type of money. And you can buy Moonies fairly cheap. It doesn't mean it's a bad plane. In fact, it's actually a really good plane. But you can buy it cheap. And I'm talking about like $50,000 in and upward now the M m20r is 120 i think or 150 so it's a little bit up there but it's also a newer plane but a lot of the moonies the m20c m20m stuff like that you can get anywhere from 40,000 to 90,000 maybe 100,000 so that's something that should be noted now as far as things goes uh, when it comes to this, and, 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 and compare that to some of the others, like the Cessnas, um, I think it was a, a one I was looking at the other day, a Cessna one uh, something other, one of the more popular ones that's used in Civil Air Patrol and a few other places, that I believe the lowest I was able to find it was close to 180, and that had an had a engine overhaul. Um, the ones that didn't need an engine overhaul, you're looking at probably close to 220, 250, something like that. Um, and that's an old, old, older one. Um, the, the comparison wise, if, if we're taking a look at similar stuff, uh, you're probably looking at with a Cessna, probably close to a uh, quarter million, maybe a little bit more than that, versus like a hundred something thousand for something like this. So, yeah, I kind of prefer these because, you know, these are more realistic when in the real world. So, as far as this goes, the uh, M20R, this actually hosts a number of features that is not within most other planes within the game at this time. One, you can open doors, which is fairly unique. Um, and this is including you can open up a window and you can open up a baggage area. Second is you get a iPad. This is, as far as I can tell, the only plane that actually gives anything like this. Now, unfortunately, you can't really use this when you're flying. This is only meant for stuff on ground, so you can open up doors and do some other stuff like that. Um, and you can even do things. Let's say, let's say, um, if we go to this particular view, and let's go around to the side so we can see the pilot and co-pilot we can see the uh, pilot co-pilot so if we actually take out the co-pilots we can see the pilots we take out the pilot see nothing at a co-pilot only see them so you can do saying things like this and it's actually fairly unique and we can also open up stuff like the baggage door as we can see here and something to note is you can actually see uh, that the detail is quite high within this um, and quite reasonable. Now, as far as that goes, it should be noted that there is a number of, um, of hidden features uh, that most people won't know about unless they've flown this or, or studied the thing. So let's go ahead and close all of these deals. And by the way, if you have this stuff open while you're trying to fly, it will uh, basically break the, the uh, plane. Uh, it, will, it will count it as like some overstress or something. So out here we have a gas gauge. This is actually quite handy as we um, go ahead and turn on the electronics of the thing. We can see the gas up here. Now the point of the gas gauge out there is if you're on the ground, this is accurate. It's level. 
and, and it's mechanical, but it's, it's accurate. Whereas if you're in the air, this is what you will use. It's not that, oh, you know, you had that in front of you or whatnot. On ground, this is accurate, whereas the light trunk is not accurate normally. Um, whereas in the air, this is accurate, whereas normally that's not as accurate. It's just to, you know, help you out quite a bit when it comes to that. So as far as some of the other things on here, we can tell it just to start up playing for us and whatnot. But I'll, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of bug with that in a second or two. Um, but as we explore through here a little bit more before we go ahead and do a cult start. Um, as you can see here, the um, we actually have a speed break. So if we hit the slash button on our numpad on a keyboard, we can actually see that. Uh, for the button for it, it's right here as seen there. But obviously you don't want to be, you know, tilting your jaw, so your yoke, so, you know, you probably want to know where the hot button is. One big thing I want to mention is up here, we, uh, this, it, um, it doesn't light up when the electronics is all going. So, you know, just note that, that, you know, th there is no light up there at all so note alt l will light that up for you now as far as that goes now that we got our stuff cranked up as far as the electronics how do we go ahead and um, start up the thing from cold let's do simulation wise easiest way is make sure full rpm full start up the electronics move the key Oh, and make sure the gas is good. And then start. This is not how you're supposed to do it, but if, simulation wise, if they want to crank it up quickly, you can do that. I also could recommend just using that. That's a little bit better. But as far as checklist wise, there is no checklist. Um, because of that, I will actually leave a link down below to this which is the actual official checklist on here the reason why i'm bringing this up is if i go ahead and um, you know so here's no checklist the reason why i bring that up is even if you do follow the checklist to the t but you say um let's, let's go ahead and do that so it tricks the system thinking that so it started up if we tell it to go ahead and do a cold start by itself it will actually go ahead do that just fine but if we go ahead and start up everything like we were trying to before there is an extremely high chance that it won't work this is an actual bug you can follow that thing to the T and it and your runs is some problems like this and to prove that this is an actual bug is let's go ahead and turn off the plane go ahead and you know do whatever turn off the electronics i'm going to leave that there because it really doesn't matter in this case and let's just go ahead and turn this stuff on And we can crank it right back up again it's something it's just it's a buck it's a buck at the end let's just call it what it is it's a buck and there's a few of them like that so you just got to keep in mind um but there is workarounds you know by just telling it to crank up the stuff for you so with that um if we go ahead and take a look at the proper way to go ahead and start this up if we go down to checklist basically you have to you know just take a look at all this which basically make sure you know things are in, in spot and whatnot if you don't have people walk around stuff like that stuff that you want to have in some later but uh, basically full rpm full everything else full throttle uh, that's one thing we didn't do and then make sure you turn on electrics which is the switches right over here and then go ahead 
and press the test button which is right here so it sees so you can see if all the lights the test lights turn on as you see there that one also turns on and then if we go down um, turn on the pump which is this thing and um, keep it on and then go ahead and start it up after you go clear out the window which is that's uh, prepare or clear so you make sure it's clear and you yell clear and um, then move the throttle to idle and, and so on now as far as that goes you know that's pretty straightforward when it comes to that let's go into some of this other things that we got here as we see here we have our um, you know clock and stuff like that so we can actually tell it to you know count count up and that way we can keep track of certain things uh, we can get the uh, GMT or the local time as far as this goes this is the actual altitude uh, set so we can actually say go up certain you know uh, vertical speed uh, and and stay at a certain altitude one times which I'm not going to really worry about with right there we have our autopilot stuff here so we can do flight directory and all the other stuff there um, it, it's pretty simple that, that same thing as you see in, in the normal G1000 as far as the acronyms and whatnot um, as far as this goes we have the um, com uh, I believe this is two and um, Yeah, that's comms two, and um, the first one's up here in the GPS area. Um, get into up a little bit more. Let's get into the GPS itself. If you played around with the G1000, it's more or less the same. But yeah, anyways, the GPS is basically similar to the G1000, except for miniature um, you know you, you can do look up airport information and stuff, stuff like that, very basic stuff if you played around with the G1000 you know how this works I might get into more of a detailed video on that at a later point um, now as far as that goes one of the more important one things here is probably the light so actually let's take a look at what the lights look like at night time as you see here we can actually light that this area up fairly well as long as you know where the switches are so you have that again that up there doesn't um, actually have its lights um, so, you know, we're kind of screwed on that point, unless if you want to turn on your headlights. So, let's go ahead and um, fly this thing up in the air and see how easy it is for us to get off the ground. simple to get out the ground. Um, you do have retractable landing gear. And that quiets down fairly quickly once it gets up there. Unlike other planes, the, um, the actual um, stuff, uh, it, like just moving your yoke and stuff like that, it, it should take a lot less effort. This is famous across even real moonies that it does not take much to do what you want them to do. So just note that. Um, they tend to like to fly fast, fly hard, 
and do and get to where they want to go. Now, in a real world, why would someone actually get this versus a Cessna or something like that? Cessnas, they do carry more weights. That's just not, you know, joke around about that. Cessnas do carry more weight, and at the end of the day, they are slower. Um, they're not slower necessarily uh, because they can carry weight, more weight. It's just how they're built. Um, now, as far as that goes, the uh, Cessnas, they actually do, some of them do hold more fuel, um, whereas the Mooney, they're meant to get from point A to point B uh, quicker. You will need to note the weight balance in a real Mooney and also in this um, fairly quickly. The fact of the matter is, is you will, if, if, if depending on the passengers and depending on yourself, if you're heavy or not, and depending on the cargo, if it's heavy or not, will depend on a number of things of what is allowed, what isn't allowed for you to even take off. Um, the overall plane itself, though, is uh, something that I should mention is it's highly automotive. Um, it, again, it's very much like a um, sports car in the sky where you got all fancy stuff into it. It's meant to get from point A to point B, but it's supposed to be a very easy travel. Not much, you know, needs to go on a yoke to turn for the actual um, other stuff. There's not much to it. So note that. And if we go ahead and take a look at, let's say we want to tell the autopilot to play with the um, the actual altitude, we can actually tell it to go ahead from there and we're telling it to climb at a given vertical speed as we see here. It's very automated which is something I really really like about Mooney Lines. Another thing to note is this general area in front right here. This in my opinion makes it a lot easier, at least for me, to figure out the settings I need to get best best performance and gas and whatnot. So like if, if I'm trying to figure out the uh, mixture, I can see, okay, if I pull it back, then um, how far back until we run into problems. It's, you know, you might say, okay, pull whatever, then it's whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is this gives me a real hard definition of figuring out what is too much and certain other things like temperatures, if it's uh, getting a little bit on the hot side or in the uh, other stuff. So yeah, that's that's just something to note into itself. Now, one thing I will tell you right now is if you uh, want to stall it, it's actually kind of um, hard to stall it within the game at times, if it depends on how your settings is. but. It should be noted that at other moments it could be quite easy. Um, it, it's not a plane that you want to really mess with too too hard um, as far as that goes. I've, I've literally seen footage of where people have tried to, to do unique things and it's just very very dangerous. So that should be noted. Uh, let's see here, you know, let's see if I can go push things to the limit. And last but not least, let's go ahead and open up. And you can see what happens there. Anyway, so as far as things goes, uh, what do I think about the overall plane itself? Um, is it realistic or not? Again, I've never been in a M20R before, but as far as a lot of the other planes like it, I, it is realistic in many aspects, but the problem that I found is um, because it doesn't have a checklist, there is certain bugs here and there, um, and... and a lot of these are easy to fix. 
um, like you saw there with the cold start and whatnot, to where it just wouldn't start for whatever reason. And um, th that's an actual problem in itself. And a few other things. I cannot say that this is going to be one of those perfect things. And because there is nothing from the actual company who made it saying that they're even working on it or if they even acknowledge some of these bugs. Um, and there's no way to even really contact them through, you know, this. Also, I'm going to contact them through other methods. But still, th that that says a lot in itself. I, I can't say that this is for everybody. But I do recommend it to a lot of people because the fact of the matter is, is at this time, there is not too many planes that isn't the, let's call it the Millionaire's Club. The fact of the matter is, is 99 to almost 100% of these planes that's within this game. It's either airline base, it's um, some weird off uh, bush plane, which is, you know, that, that in that sense, that's fine. I, I don't really have much experience from there. But when it comes to something like this, most of the planes that's within here is quite a bit of money, like a house, so or or several houses. So, yeah, that's this particular plane. Yes, it is quite a bit of money into itself, but it's getting a lot closer to realism because a lot of people in the real world, the planes they fly is closer in the eighties. Uh, some some 90s, but 70s, 80s type of thing due to price alone. So that's something to note into itself, but um, as far as it goes, everything else is, is you know pretty straightforward into that front. I'm just happy to see that they have a Mooney in-game now. But anyway, so as far as that goes, if you do have any questions, anything else, then feel free to leave that in the comment section, and I'll see what I can do about that. But leave a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next video. I hope you have a great day.